Hello again. I'm privileged here to, to have a dialogue with Elder Willie Oliver. He's the director of the family department in the worldwide uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. And here we are. Welcome again to Romania. Thank you. Here we are to talk about um, this piece of heaven, which should be in all our houses. Please share with us something about your wife, your kids, your, your blessing. Okay, well, I've been married for 37 years. Uh, in a few months, it'll be 38 years. Obviously, I got married when I was five. You cannot tell, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I met my wife when uh, she was in her last year of university, and I was a young pastor in New York City, and um, uh, we dated long distance for a year. And when she graduated, a few months after that, we were married. So um, I guess as a Seventh-day Adventist uh, clergy person, I think about our membership and know that Seventh-day Adventist members uh, are uncomfortable with their pastors not being married or having a girlfriend. So for me as a young pastor, it was perfect to have my girlfriend 200 miles away and uh, not around day in and day out. Uh, she actually came into New York City every two weeks to visit me. Her mother lived in New York City, so that was easy. Um, but it's been, I, I have to tell you that my wife is a special person. Uh, well, special for having put up with me for 37 <laughs> years to begin with, but beyond she, that. And she still loves you. She does, she does. More and more. I, I hope so, I think so. Um, uh, she is a vivacious person. She and I just had a very um, intimate conversation last week because I've been traveling for the last week or so. And we tend to speak more when I'm traveling. You know, usually we travel together, but when we don't, we, we tend to spend more time talking um, and since we now Zoom since COVID, um, it, it, it becomes a good modality, a good way of having conversation. I thank God for my wife. I could not have chosen her myself. I see her as my biggest blessing from God. And if there's anything I have to say to the audience here in Romania about the importance of marriage, not only marriage, but a good marriage. And to have a good marriage, you have to make good choices. And to make good choices, you have to start making those good choices earlier on, long before you're even thinking about marriage. That means that hopefully God will bless you with good parents, with parents who are themselves in a good marriage. And parents who have good marriages tend to have children in good marriages as well because they model the kind of behavior that needs to take place to build a solid marriage relationship. Um, we have two children and uh, both our children are grown now and they're professionals and they're on their own. Our daughter is married and away with her husband. Our son is not married yet, but he doesn't live with us anymore. He's a civil engineer, and he, um, he's a very busy young professional. To be sure, we are praying that God will bless him with a good wife. We happen to believe that our daughter has been blessed with a good husband. Uh, we know him. We know his family. We like him, and uh, we like them for each other. So we're grateful to God for that. But marriage could also be very difficult and very destructive. People could be abusive. Uh, people could um, uh, tear each other down instead of building each other up. So the prayer is that each day we need to choose to have the best marriage we can possibly have. Elaine and I have learned that, that if we're going to have a good marriage, it's a choice you have to make every day to be patient, to be kind. It's a part of the Christian ethic. You mentioned um, keywords, patience and kindness. When it comes to struggles and dysfunctionality of, of marriages, how can you put it in, in some keywords, the, the most important uh, things about 
overwhelming or overcoming uh, a conflict or trying to manage differences and uh, difficult times. We, we all want this, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not a success every time. Mm -hmm. What have you learned from your personal experience and from all over the world? By the way, is marriage different from continent to continent or kind of the same? You know, um, we're more alike than we are unalike around the world. Everyone wants to have family. Everyone wants to be married. Everyone wants to have a warm place where you go, where you belong. Everybody wants that. God made us that way. Um, but people come to marriage with, with baggage, you know, depending on where you were raised, who raised you, if your parents had a lot of dysfunction, if there were alcoholics in your family, if, if people didn't work, if, if, you know, people didn't pay enough attention to uh, being upstanding citizens, to going to school, to learning a trade, to getting a profession, to getting a good job, to finding a good person, to having an honorable marriage, instead of just getting together with someone, you know, and it's not official. I would say, if we are people of faith and we follow the word of God, we're more likely to have good marriages than not. Good marriages are not perfect marriages. We like to say that. There are no perfect marriages because there are no perfect people. But uh, husbands and wives who choose to have a good marriage are intentional every day of making choices that will build their marriage rather than tear it down. One of the biggest issues in marriage, and you said it well, is managing differences, right? We're all different. Even with our siblings, our brothers and sisters that grew up in the same home, we're different. We have different likes and dislikes. Sometimes in ourselves we have different yes. points of view. Yes, right? we're conflicted. On Monday we feel one way, on Tuesday we feel a different way. So even with ourselves we have conflicts. So, I think that people have the best chance of having a good marriage when they are aware of what makes a good marriage. A good way to do that is to begin with premarital counseling, premarital education. And I'm happy that the church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Romania, most of its pastors now are trained in Prepare and Rich, one of the leading modalities of marriage intervention or marriage preparation in the world. I'll, I'll keep this for, for our next show because Absolutely. this program of uh, premarital uh, counseling is too important to, to put it only in a few minutes. Uh, let's go back to, um, to marriages and I'd like you to focus on, on young couples without children or with uh, infants at home? What are their struggles and what can you share with them for their benefit in this beginning of their marriage? Yeah, so <laughs> early marriage is a mixed bag. Uh, certainly the first few weeks you're excited, especially if you haven't lived together because there's a lot of scientific research that says that people who don't live together before marriage and wait until marriage to be really intimate with each other do better than people who live together before marriage. So that's one thing that we'd like to share with the Romanian and population. And also the, the Bible and the Lord teaches us to, to wait yes, absolutely. Well, until marriage for living together. Yes, yes. well, it, it's not even so much to wait until marriage. The Bible declares where sexuality takes place in the context Within. of marriage. Yes, it's, and a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. There you have it. And then in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, in the New Testament, it says, let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband, lest you be tempted and fall. So sexuality is it's a blessing. It's a blessing, and God tells us how He configured it. If you're a male, you're married to a woman. If you're a woman, you're married to a male. We don't hate anyone. We're not against anyone. We are for what God has ordained for the human family. So we, if there's someone who has a different sexual orientation, we're not against anyone. We love everyone. 
And we also want to call everyone to follow God's way. Because if we follow God's way, we're happier, we're healthier, and we are more prosperous. But going back to the young couples that you asked, early marriage could be exciting, but early marriage also could be fraught with all kinds of difficulty in that, well, sometimes people go to a default, especially young men. They're married and they have all these messages in their heads that say they're the boss, they're in control, they're in charge. So they become, uh, well, abusive many times, wanting to make sh domineering and trying to dominate their wives. And that's not what marriage is. That's not what it is. The Bible makes it clear. 1 Corinthians 13, which is the love chapter, verse 4, love is patient, love is kind. So I would say to young couples, spend time together, but be patient and kind with each other. And if you have children, young children, it's even more delicate because all of a sudden there's a third person in your marriage. Gets the attention. Yes, and this especially is a sore point with young husbands whose wives now have a child to they take care like of. They feel like they, yes. they lost They've lost their, their place. Wives. Men, get over it. You're, you're the adult in this <laughs> relationship. You're the father. So encourage and help your wife to nurture your child. Be patient, even more patient, because now there's a third person in your home and now everything you say and everything you do is shaping the character of this young child. So if you're a young couple and you have a child, you have big responsibility. Big responsibility to posterity. What's going to happen in the future? What kind of society we're going to have in Romania? Hey, here's what I know. When we have strong marriages, we're more likely to have a strong family. And when we have a strong family, if we're people of faith, we're more likely to have a strong church. If we're people in society, we're more likely to have a strong society. And what you want all around the world, and certainly here in Romania, we want strong societies, strong families, strong neighborhoods, strong cities, strong villages. And we do that best when we have strong marriages and strong parents who are aware of how crucial their responsibility is to nurture the next generation, to be kind and gentle, and contribute to the better good of society. I think this is the most important gift or legacy from a father or the mother to just to establish a certain kind of um, atmosphere and a background and relationships in order for the young people when they uh, fly away from the nest to, to tend to have the same level of respect and kindness and not to get under the ideal of God. Yes. How, how would you put it now at the end of, of uh, today's show, how would you put it in one word, the key word, the things you said about young people, young marriages, and the ideal of God? Crucial. Uh, they're absolutely crucial that we not miss any of these cues, that teenagers wait, that parents love them, create an atmosphere in their home of warmth, of kindness, of caring, so that they're not out there looking for love, what they interpret as love, that they're not yet mature enough to engage in. That's important. Certainly, uh, young couples, they need to be patient and kind with each other, and couples with young children need to be especially careful that they are aware of their responsibility to building up the family, the society, the church, so that wherever it is that you live, we have a place that we are happy to call home. That is a blessed place for us, for our family, for our friends, and for our community. Even for, even for our neighbors. That's right. It's a little piece of heaven. Thank you for your words. Greetings to your, your wife, Elaine, and may, may the Lord bless your travelings around the world. Thank you. Until next time, uh, keep in touch with us on, on the, the ways you'll be used for uh, letting us know on Project M, the questions and uh, advices or recommendations you want us to know from you. God bless you all.